morning everybody, unless of course you're watching this video in the evening, in that case good evening and you are watching Time Travel TV and today we're going to be talking about the last great naval battle that was fought with sails. We are going to be talking about the Battle of Trafalgar, that is why I've got this rather fetching hat and this beautiful eye patch which I will now move because it's beginning to annoy me. Ow, Nick Nelson Cope! So, uh, 1804, and Napoleon Bonaparte was Emperor of France and had beaten basically everybody in Europe. But once he had beaten a European alliance, another one would always crop up, and at the heart of this was always Britain. So he decided to invade. Bonaparte has made himself Emperor of France. Yes, we saw that. What is his next move? His next move will be the invasion of England. So, invading Britain was much easier said than done for Napoleon. This would entail him having to have his army cross the English Channel. And Britain was very much the dominant naval power of the time. So, therefore, he would have to beat Britain at sea. This was, again, easier said than done because the British Navy, the Royal Navy, were blockading most of the French fleet in their port. So, he ordered that... Admiral Villeneuve, who had his fleet in Cadiz, his French and Spanish fleet, coincidentally, he ordered him to take his fleet and escape to Sardinia in the Mediterranean in order to cause some problems in the Mediterranean for the British there in September 1805. As uh, Villeneuve went, he noticed that he was being followed by the British fleet under the command of Admiral Lord Nelson and noticed that he could not outrun them, so he decided to turn back. But it was too late, for the British Navy had caught up with them. Now, naval warfare up to this point was incredibly Basic. There wasn't really much strategy behind it. Almost all naval battles followed the same strategy. Uh, massive ships of the line forming massive lines of battle, passing each other like this, firing as much cannonballs as they can into each other. This meant the winners, basically, they won if they had massive ships, good guns, and if they had a lot of luck. Nelson, on the other hand, had already had some massive victories, such as the Battle of the Nile and the Battle of Copenhagen, and he had won those by seriously altering the traditional naval warfare attack. So he would do the same at the Battle of Trafalgar. His plan was to have two uh, lines of battle with the ships of the line attacking the French at 90 degrees to their battle line. On the 21st of October, 1805, the two fleets met. It was about now that Nelson issued his most famous order that everyone always remembers. England expects every man will do his duty. I wish to say to the fleet, England confides that every man will do his duty. You must be quick, for I have one more to follow, which is for close action. The Lordship will permit me to substitute expects for confides. It will be sooner completed. That will do. Make it directly. The two British lines of battle were commanded by Nelson and Collingwood. By noon, they were both within range of the French and Spanish guns and at their mercy, except the, the gunmanship of the French and Spanish weren't as good as you might expect. They were not very accurate, for they had little chance of practicing while they were blockaded in Cadiz. The tide of the battle turned in favor of the British when the first British ship arrived within the French line. The HMS Royal Sovereign fired huge broadsides first into the Santa Ana. Then the HMS Victory came along, firing even greater broadsides into the Bucantar, putting the ship out of action. The 
battle was not over yet. The HMS Victory then engaged the Redoubtable. The Redoubtable had put sharpshooters in the rigging of the ship, and since, as per British naval tradition, the officers would stride up and down the deck wearing their full regalia, they made easy targets. One of those targets was Nelson himself, who was struck in the shoulder and fatally wounded. As soon as he was hit, Nelson knew that he was done for. The bullet had travelled from his shoulder to his spine. Uh, he was carried below decks in order not to demoralise the uh, men. Just as they were doing this, the crew of the Redoubtable were preparing to board the Victory. Things looked bleak for the British, until the HMS Temeraire came up along the other side of the Redoubtable, firing great broadsides into the side of it. The Redoubtable could not fire back, as all their gunmen were getting ready to board the uh, HMS Victory. As they did this, both ships fired into the side of the Redoubtable, blowing it to a pulp! One by one, many French and Spanish ships fell to the British. The vanguard of their fleet had not been committed in the battle. They tried to swing round and outflank the British and have an attack, but this was fended off and they fled. The battle had been won for the British and Britain continued to roll the waves. Except, on sad note, Nelson succumbed to his wounds and died, although it was only after he was told that he had won a great victory for the British. Direction and the life set for Lord. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and... So Nelson had sailed off into the history books as a naval legend, and Britain was safe from invasion. And this is by far the most influential uh, battle in the Napoleonic Wars, far more significant than the Battle of Waterloo. After this battle, there was absolutely no hope for Napoleon ever to invade Britain, so therefore he turned his attention eastward to Russia. And, as we all know, this would eventually lead, lead to his downfall. So, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please subscribe to Time Travel TV, and I'll see you next time. Cheerio!